Now, before we dive into quantum error correcting codes, let's ask the question why encode and decode in the first place? It seems like we are doing more work by encoding bit and then decoding bit, sending more bits through the channel or, or quantum bits. Is it worth doing it? What are we gaining exactly? So in order to explain this, let me consider a very simple classical scheme known as a, a repetition code. Um, instead of sending one bit through the channel, knowing that uh, the probability that the bit will be flipped is P, we use the channel three times and send three bits through this channel. But uh, whenever we want to send zero, we repeat zero three times. So zero is encoded as zero, zero, zero. And whenever we want to send one, we encode one as one, one, one. A very simple repetition code. Now, of course, um, each bit when transmitted through the channel has the same probability p to go wrong. So it can be flipped with probability p. So for example, on this diagram here, the second bit was flipped. So 0, 0, 0 emerges as 0, 1, 0 on the other side. Now, the difference is that we have now a decoding scheme at uh, the end of the channel. So what we do, we look at the output and take the majority of the digit as, uh, as the, the original digit. So we do this sort of, kind of majority voting. Rule. So the majority voting rule says, well, if you see more zeros at the output, zero was sent. If you see more ones at the output, one was sent. So in this case, one error happened. You can see at the output zero, one, zero, then your decoding rule tells you that zero was sent. As you can easily see, this kind of schemes allows you to correct for at most one errors, right? So whenever nothing happens, that's fine, the majority rule works. When one error happens, so one of the bits of the, at the output is wrong, then the majority rule works nicely, right? So then, you, again, you reset it into the correct value. However, if you have two or three errors, then majority rule doesn't work. You reset it into wrong values. So let's compare the probability of error after decoding in this scheme with a repetition code and uh, compare it with uh, the case where we don't do any encoding. So when we don't do any encoding, no error happens with probability 1 minus p and your error happens with probability p. Now, so this is the case where we don't work very hard. We leave the channel as it is. We don't do any encoding or decoding. Now we are doing the repetition code the probability that nothing happens during the transmission of those three bits is 1 minus p cube, right? So those are independent errors, or the lack of independent errors. So this guy goes with probability 1 minus p unaffected. The other one also goes with probability 1 minus p unaffected. And the third one goes with probability 1 minus p unaffected. So the product gives us 1 minus p cubed. Now, one error can happen in three different ways. On the first bit, on the second bit, or on the third bit. So when one error happens, it happens with probability p, but two other bits are not affected. So they go through with probability 1 minus p squared. And as we said, there are three ways, three possible ways that uh, one error can happen on the first bit, second bit, on the third bit. So let's multiply it by three. Now, um, for two errors, we have a situation where you know, this, this will be equal to 3p squared 1 minus p. Two errors happen with probability p squared. And uh, again, the other bit is not affected. That's why 1 minus p factor. And that can happen in three different ways. And three errors can happen with probability p cube. So when we apply the majority rule, one error is corrected. So let's draw a line here, because now effectively the probability 
of error will be the, the, the probability that two errors, physical errors, happen or three physical errors happen during the transmission. So we add up those two numbers and that gives us 3p squared minus 2p cubed. So then, of course, the probability that uh, the, the, the majority will, will get us the right value is 1 minus this one. 1 minus 3p squared plus 2p cubed. So that, that is your effective error now. And we have to compare it with this case. So when we work hard, we do encoding and decoding, we get error with this probability. And we don't do anything. This is the probability of error. So now, of course, those numbers, the p is small. It's like, say, 1% or less. So you know, as a physicist, you don't worry about those factors here. You say, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm comparing p with p squared. And this seems like a significant reduction in errors. So for example, if, if you have 1% error, so this p is 0 0.0.01, then the p squared will be 0 0.0001, right? 1 over <coughs> 10,000. So, so that's, that's quite a gain. We reduce the error from p to roughly p squared. And that's a good thing. So we are going to play this game in, uh, in the quantum domain now. We are going to use a quantum version of uh, the repetition code. But in the quantum case, uh, we have to be a little bit more careful. It's, it's more, more subtle, right? Because it's not just like a bit flip that we will have to deal with. There will be a bit flip and there will be a phase flip. But the good thing is that we managed to digitize quantum errors. So we know that at least we are dealing with two types of errors on bits, on qubits. That is a bit flip and phase flip. So we can correct for bit flip with a scheme that is basically a quantum analog of this repetition code. And then we will deal with the phase flip by, by, um, by some trick, by switching to a different basis, as you will see in a moment. <coughs>